in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. One word from God can change your life forever. Welcome to Life in the Word with Pastor Chuks Ozabon. We are now in union with Christ. We have his life and his nature, enabling us to live like him. Your life will not be a testimony. It will be a testimony to the fact that Jesus died and rose again. It will be a testimony to the fact that the curse is broken, the curse is defeated, and the blessing is operational. It will be a testimony to the fact that we are not of this world. It will be a testimony to the fact that our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or think according to the power. And so, joy, the power for breakthroughs. Let me begin like this in a roundabout manner, just give you a prophetic word in my spirit. Um, by way of introduction, Joshua chapter 1. If you receive this, then it is yours. Hallelujah. Are you there? Joshua 1. Read with me verse 11. This is God speaking to Joshua. He says, pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Praise Jesus. In three days. Hallelujah. Notice what they were not able to do for the last 40 years of their existence. God said to them, you are going to do it in three days. What they couldn't do for a long time. Results that eluded them for a long time. Praise God. God said in three days you are going to do it. What stood between Israel and the promised land was the Jordan. Hallelujah. Now hear me this morning good people. There are certain things you've been trying to accomplish for so long. That just won't come together. It keeps escaping you. The enemy keeps shifting the goalpost. But I come with the word of God to you this morning. You are going to do it in record time. And your miracles begin this week in the name of the Lord Jesus. God's favor is going to put results in your life in record breaking time and with record breaking speed. Say with me, that is me. Hallelujah. Hear me by the word of God. It's our season. You got to believe God. The cheapest way to prosper is to believe his prophets. It's a season. Your circumstances might not look like it. People might tell you, you don't look like a success. But that does not matter. What God says is the reality. I'm telling you by the word of God, there are certain barriers that God will break as I speak. Certain barriers are breaking. Whether they are visible or invisible. You are crossing your own Jordan. You are breaking free from whatever held you back. If that is you shout yes in three days hallelujah to Jesus every visible and invisible barrier standing between you and your dream it's got to give way to that as I speak because you are coming into testimonies you are not coming with tears you are coming with joy they got to give way in the name of Jesus in three days hallelujah to jesus again if you read the same book of joshua chapter 3 between verses 14 and 15 you would notice that the time god gave the command for them to cross the jordan was when the jordan overflowed his banks hallelujah the time god gave for them to cross was when the jordan overflowed his banks now, this was a wrong time in the eyes of man. Hallelujah. Totally wrong. Now, God didn't ask them to cross the Jordan when it was at its lowest ebb and everyone could just walk across easily. No. In the wisdom of God, he asked them to cross when the Jordan overflowed its banks. In the eyes of man, it was wrong time. In the eyes of man, it was risky. 
Even suicidal. How can you cross a river when it's overflowing? Are you out of your mind? Some will say, why would you take such a step at such a time? You gotta be kidding me. God, do you know what you are talking about at all? It looked foolish. It looked impossible. It looked crazy. Just like I come with a word to you this morning, it's time to advance. Your circumstances are immaterial. God can change them in the twinkling of an eye. God said to them, prepare your victory. Start preparing for where you are going. Stop trying to manage the difficulties around you. Stop trying to manage the mess around you. Begin to prepare for the billion flow. Begin to plan for your wedding. Begin to plan to buy that franchise. It's time to cross your own Jordan. Who am I talking to this morning? I'm tired of being limited. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of being sick. I'm stepping over. And it's time to cross over. If that is you, shout yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. It didn't look right in the eyes of man. And look at it. At such a time, Pastor Chooks is coming. All six feet, two of me is telling you, it's time to go forward. It's time to start that business. It's time to begin to pay for your wedding gown. With rising cost of fuel, with the economy in shambles, with your credit record in tatters, it is still time to go forward. Not because I said so, but because God is saying so. It is time to advance. Hear me from today. Some of you are leaving certain things behind. They've tried to hold on to you for too long. You've carried them on your back like a baggage. You are discharging them this morning. Every baggage of sorrow, every baggage of limitation, every baggage of guilt, every baggage of failure is dropping off your life today. In the name of the Lord Jesus, it is time to advance. Hallelujah. It is time to advance. Beloved, you got to realize that God does not work with the natural calendar. Hallelujah. All the conditions around you do not have to be perfect for God to take you forward. Whether they are perfect or imperfect, He's still the Almighty God. He can use the most unlikely situations to prosper you. In the midst of that mess, in your marriage of finances, I hear God ask me to tell you, you are going to sing a new song. You are going to dance again. You are going to rejoice again. It's a brand new day. It's time to advance. Say with me, I'm going forward. Say it boldly, I'm going forward. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Natural conditions around you don't have to be perfect for God to advance you. This is how the enemy has managed to confuse us. We were waiting for everything to look just right. God can override the natural to put your dream in your hands. Hallelujah. And then understand, he is the almighty God. His timing is always perfect. It might not be right in the eyes of man, but in as much as God says so, it is so. Because it makes all things beautiful in his time. Somebody here, your life is about to receive a new level of beauty. God is about to beautify your life, your marriage, your business with his glory. If that is you, shout hallelujah. Anytime God shows up, is the right time. Hallelujah. He says, go forward. Even when it looks impossible. Hallelujah. Realize good people. God would not ask you to do something you can accomplish in your strength. I now discovered, sweetheart, he made them cross the Jordan at that specific time that looked impossible so that they could release their faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. He asked them to cross at that time so that they could release their faith. What you are stepping into now, hear me and underline it in your notes. It's not something you can accomplish in your strength. In a thousand years, you can't do it. You are going to look back and wonder, was that me? 
It was God that would advise you with his grace and with his power. It's time to go forward, friends. It's time to go forward. Hallelujah. God will always put you in a position that will require a release of your faith. If it is easy, then it is not God. But if it looks impossible like some of you now, then it is your mighty God. Hallelujah. It is time to advance. Leave all the guilt behind. Leave all the failures behind. It is time to advance. Can you preach it to your neighbor? Help me t say with boldness, it is time. Say it, say it. It is time to advance. Hallelujah. God is saying, rise up. And go forward, pursue your dreams. Hallelujah. Even if the Jordan in front of you is overflowing its banks, realize that the one that made the river Jordan can speak to the river Jordan. It is time to, I say it again, it is time to go forward. I see you take a step that will change your life forever. I see you advance. I see you go forward with speed. It is time to advance. Hallelujah. I know the challenges around you appear overwhelming. And the bills never stop pouring in. The banks have stalked you all week long. <laughs> they call you any private number you see frightens you. But it is still time to go forward. I know men have let you down. I know others stopped you in the back. I know some walked away. Leave all that behind. It is time to go forward. Hallelujah. This one presenting this truth to you this morning about joy. Say with me joy. joy. Say it again joy. joy. Hallelujah. As believers we are joyful people. We are joyful people. The most adverse circumstances are not meant to overcome us. Rather, it should amplify who we are. We are joyful people. Hallelujah. What overcomes the natural man and makes them faint should not diminish the glory we carry. We are crowned with glory and honor. We are supernatural people. We have what it takes to smile at impossibilities and still advance. I'm talking to you this morning about joy. Say with me again, joy. joy. Read Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Everybody read with me loudly. The Bible says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. One more time, let's read it loudly. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Praise Jesus. Now amongst others, there are three major forces that differentiate the kingdom of God from any other kingdom in creation. Each of these forces are unique to the kingdom of God alone. The first the Bible talks about is righteousness. What is righteousness? It's a force the devil cannot win against. Righteousness is the ability to stand before God without any sense of sin, any sense of guilt, any sense of inferiority, inadequacy, or condemnation. Righteousness is having a standing before God as if you've never sinned. And then the second force is the force of peace. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says that therefore be freely justified by faith. We have peace with God. Meaning God is no longer angry with you. Hallelujah. We have peace with God. God is no longer angry with you. You've passed from death to life. We have supernatural peace. Peace is not the absence of trouble. It's the presence of God. John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. 
So the world has a way of giving peace to tranquilize us through a series of injections. But that is not the kingdom way. The kingdom way, peace is a person. His name is Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. And then the third force is joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, joy is a fruit of the born again human spirit. The unbeliever cannot have joy. Let me say it again. The unbeliever cannot have joy or walk in joy because he doesn't have it. They don't know joy. Joy only belongs to the church of Jesus. If you read Galatians 5 in the 22nd verse, the Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and so on. It belongs in the church. Now look up, everybody. We are not praying or fasting for God to give us joy. We have it already. Tell your neighbor, I got it. I'm a joyful person. <laughs> Hallelujah. Joy is a fruit that the Spirit of God produces in us. Joy became a part of your nature the day you got born again. This is why it diminishes your redemptive status when you say you are bored or you are depressed. Glory to God. Joy became a part of your nature the day you got born again. So we don't pray for joy. We manifest joy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Joy became a part of your nature the day you got born again. First Peter chapter 1 verse 7 and 8. The Bible says that the trying of your faith being much more precious than God that perished. Though it be tried with fire. Though you go through terrible circumstances. Though you walk through storms. Might be found unto the praise and honor and glory. At the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen you love. In whom though you see him not yet believing. You rejoice with joy unspeakable full of glory. This is our testimony. Hallelujah to Jesus. Things might not be working out right. You might be looking at your dream going down in flames. But you keep rejoicing. Because joy is not natural. It's supernatural. Somebody say thank you Jesus. Real joy is supernatural. And then it is your inheritance. Now what is joy? Sorry I'm rushing. I got to finish this. What is joy? Joy is not happiness. Joy is not simply happiness. The world has happiness. We have joy. Hallelujah. Happiness is based on circumstances. It is based on what happens. If what happens is good, then they are happy. But if it's not good, then they are sad and depressed and they check into a health farm. Praise God. Happiness is totally dependent on external stimuli. On external circumstances, it can be manipulated by the devil. Hallelujah to Jesus. Happiness is temporary. It is transient. It is emotion based. Praise God. On the other hand, joy is not based on circumstances. It is based on the ever abiding person of Jesus. The one that does not change. He said, behold, I'm the Lord, I change not. He said, Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today and forever. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Happiness is superficial. It belongs in the sense realm. It can be manipulated. Hallelujah. You know, for instance, somebody knows you had a fight, you know, maybe with Mr. X. And then they see you all happy. He knows that all he needs to do is mention the name of Mr. X. That happiness drops to the floor. So it can be manipulated. It is superficial. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Whereas joy is supernatural. It belongs in the spirit realm. It's a kingdom product. Praise Jesus. Joy is not merely laughter. It is not laughter. Hallelujah. You can be joyful and not laugh. The Bible says before Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead in that John 11, the Bible says that Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. He wasn't laughing. So joy is not simply laughter. Some can be laughing and be whipping buckets inside. So joy is not laughter. Oh, glory to God. 
And then, what is joy? Glory. There are two Greek words that seem to more aptly describe joy. The first Greek word is kara. Can I spell for you? C-H-A-R-O-A. One more time. C-H-A-R-O-A. Kara refers to inner delight or gladness of heart. The other Greek word is agaliasis. Don't be confused now. Let me spell for you. A-G-A-L-L-I-A-S-E-S. Let me say it again. A-G-A-L-L-I-A-S-E-S. Now, two Greek words were joined together to produce agaliasis. The first Greek word is agan. Agan means much. Agan is spelled A-G-A-N. It means much. The second word is halomai. Glory. Just follow me. Don't worry. Do I spell halomai for you? Praise God. That's why I'm your pastor. Halomai is spelled H-A-L-L-O-M-A-I. Glory to God. It means to leap or gush. So literally, agaliasis means much jumping. It means to jump for joy. It means to have joy gushing forth from within. It means to be exceeding glad. It means to rejoice greatly. Say with me, I am joyful. Now, this is the core of the message today. For most Christian folks, this has been the, the missing ingredient in their work with God. They allow circumstances control them. Not knowing, you should control everything from your spirit. You went for an interview, it didn't come right, you are so depressed, you can't even eat. When that happens, and you shut down the force of joy, the Holy Spirit no longer functions. The Spirit of God is a spirit of joy. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Or you went, you know, submitted a tender, and you now found out that they didn't take your tender. You feel so depressed. What just happened? The fact that the board didn't approve it that day does not mean it is not yours. It can be approved at 12 midnight and the letter delivered to your door. I declare by your life this morning in Jesus' name. Every impossible situation around you will turn around in your favor. If you receive that, would you say amen? amen. This has been the missing ingredient in our walk with God. Lots of folks are not walking in the joy of the Lord. They have already. They are waiting for circumstances to make them happy. Friends, do not subcontract your joy to someone. Do not sublet your happiness to anybody. It comes from within you. Circumstances should not determine how you feel. Glory to God. Ah! Ah! Lots of folks wear long faces. Why it's a waste of time is that God does not respond to feelings. No matter how long your face is, God doesn't notice. He only responds to faith. He said, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Things don't have to be right for me to be joyful. Hallelujah to Jesus. Lots of folks always looking for sympathy. You see them, their shoulders are low. You see them, their head is low. You see some of them always in a hurry. You see, I noticed something. You are not just a human being going around aimlessly. You are a child of God. There is a, a royal dignity that should follow you. Believe me. A royal dignity. Hallelujah to Jesus. Even if you are going with a taxi now, don't rush like everybody you know want to get into a taxi. You are fighting. It is my space. It is, that's why they call it mass transit. You are not a part of the masses. You are a child of God. Maintain a saintly dignity. Because you know that boss is not my place. It's only a temporary position. I'm going to get my car shortly. Amen. 